Welcome to our Going Green podcast. Today, we're going to have a look at greenwashing. Now, for those who don't know, greenwashing is a, is a process of basically conveying a false impression or providing, in fact, misleading information about sort of a company's products to make them sound more environmentally f- sort of friendly. So I could say, for instance, the lessons that I give are all CFC free. That's chlorofluorocarbons. And uh, that's, that, that sounds rather good. I know. And, and I'm going to give you an applause for that. However, you're going to learn how to use that properly soon. I will. And let's be honest, every lesson in the world doesn't contain chlorofluorocarbons. It's true, but it certainly is misleading. And so we're going to have a look now at some of these sort of famous sort of greenwashing things and some that possibly aren't quite so famous and perhaps some that uh, you might have sort of believed and be sort of taken in by. Flabbergasted, yes. And, and the first one that came to my mind is this idea of imagery. I, I look at this sort of beautiful sports car. Let, let's say it's a, a nice sort of... Lamborghini. Yeah, a Lamborghini, yeah. You can have a Lamborghini. You'd like a Lamborghini. Okay. Yes. And uh, it's got sort of... 12 cylinder sort of petrol engine but you see it driving along in beautiful italian countryside natural scenes and you think oh how romantic i've got this car and i could drive in these beautiful places and you see the 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 windows down and the hair blowing and the fresh air and you think oh this is good but you're not thinking about all the petrol you're putting in and all the sort of I know from a friend who's got one, the cost of the tyres. Well, yeah. I, I saw a, a lovely ad in the same vein. Uh, I think it was for a heavy, um, a Jeep, but it's a heavy 4x4. Four four. And it was sort of um, something like, think sustainable, think heavy. And then it was 20 miles per gallon. And it's sort of like going, this is a nice green picture showing off, but they have to include the mileage, because it's illegal if they don't. X and then you realize well it's not really that green yes. 20 miles per gallon yeah it, it it could be worse it could be uh gallons per mile look look it was an american advert <laughs> and, yeah, so we'll dance over that okay so uh right so imagery that that's important and you see this a lot in all sorts of adverts not just cars we were being rather silly there perhaps but you see quite a lot of natural things and you think of this product in that sort of vein. Yeah, all and, right. And you don't think of it so sort of... No, you don't. How, how about this? How about the classic, the classic uh, Coca-Cola Life? Coca-Cola Life, of course, is the same Coca-Cola. It's just got a green label on it, as in that's, that's the label. And it says it's got sweetness from natural sources. Uh... I assume they're taking that things like oil is a natural product. Uh, not, not, not quite. The answer is the sugar normally found in Coca-Cola, they say it's natural sugar. But you know, the answer is, is sugar natural to begin with? You know, anyway, that's all that. And therefore, they claim it is from natural sources, the sugar. A- and it is. And so are all the other products. Correct. So... So, they, but they're using the imagery of sort of, oh, this green, the frown, look at how environmentally friendly this is. Well, that's coming on to clickbait, isn't it, really? Ah, it, it's not. Not quite. Technically, they haven't lied. Sugar is from a natural source. It is natural. It's yeah, but I, I, I can put down something that my product is organic or my... Uh, now, that is clickbait. Yes, and, and 100% recycled. Also clickbait. My product is certified by me, probably. Well, that, that one's harder Ooh. to do because you've got to work out who's doing the certification. But as I said, if you're doing the certification, as in the self, you know, the company or the self is doing their self-certification, 
Well, then it's not really certifying because usually it's our independent certification or standard, but there, there's a company out there doing, uh, uh, I mustn't make, mention SC Johnson, uh, and um, their products how are all verified by themselves so they've got their own sort of certification uh rather than using a third party ah. uh, and that that's always a worry that uh, you know if you can't use a third party you know sort of what's what you know what's wrong are with you, your actual yeah, product the, yeah the answer is are you trying to hide something Ooh. and uh We've, we've also got the thing, is my product sort of recyclable? And, and we do get products that are recyclable, but do you mean the whole product is recyclable or just a little bit of it's recyclable? Well, but there's, there's two parts of that. Obviously, if you've got a product and it's got some parts are recyclable, and if you label those parts are recyclable, right, that's fine. As opposed to if you have, if you've got a, bits that aren't recyclable, and you say this bit isn't, but this bit is, then technically you've stated on your product as much as you can what is recyclable and what isn't recyclable. That that's what everybody uh, And you've been likes. honest. And you've been honest. You know, you're being saying this isn't not yet, you know, and this is. We're trying to use it, incorporate it in. You're celebrating that side, but you know, you're just saying the bit that can't be recycled, it's not yet, which is that's fair enough. And of course, in some places, some things that are recyclable aren't recyclable in other places. Yeah. And that's a very difficult issue, really, yeah. if you're you're trying to say something is recyclable and it is recyclable, but not where you, yeah. so, so, the so product the, is. Yeah. The answer is, is of course, it's commonly plastic. You've got the different numbers. It could be recycled. It could be recycled. But the critical point is they don't know where it's going. It's international. However, if they labeled what type of plastic it is, then it's a, it, it you don't have to do the sort of is it recyclable or isn't because you say right it's this type of plastic which isn't recyclable in this country but is in these others therefore we've stated what can happen and how it should work so you know it, yeah. it's fair enough they've done as uh, much you, as they can and i notice now more and more when i get my packaging coming in it's got recycle signs on it and it's got the number on it so people know what sort of plastic it is and uh and therefore recycle it quite easy but how about my my one then my lessons are cfc free absolutely true uh but this is a, a sort of an irrelevant claim here yeah it, it's hard to really say because of course it is, I, it's right it's correct I, yes yeah well, granted that it's a hundred percent correct it's just one of these claims that you know you're you're claiming that oh I'm I'm six foot, or I'm over six foot. Well, yes, fair enough. But what does that prove? What does that do? What does that state? You know, what what point you're trying to make with that? Yeah. You know, well, it's really relevant on a podcast, isn't it? You know, you're this, over six foot tall. Yeah, yes. This this podcast, <laughs> you know, this podcast is CFC free. What does that say? You know, exactly. Um, you know, critically, a really big example of this was, of course, Ryanair. Ryanair said it had the lowest fares, which it sometimes does, you know, not going it, but it also had the lowest emissions. And you go, uh, lowest emissions of what? Airplane emissions? Uh, company emissions? Is it methane emissions or is it CO2 emissions? You know, vagueness in this sort of saying, these claims that saying oh, we've got the lowest, lowest what? Uh, not not going to tell you what because obviously then we probably don't but we, we're making yeah. the claim but this is where lost. people use the phrase eco-friendly or environmentally friendly because it, it really doesn't necessarily mean something you you've actually got to know how this is environmentally friendly yeah i could say that uh you know this podcast is sustainable this podcast is perhaps non-toxic oh Ooh. Uh, i don't think i could get away with this pro this podcast is biodegradable oh I, <laughs> i'll tell you something i will biodegrade later yeah and uh, i i am certainly biodegradable um i don't fancy trying it but uh 
what is biodegradable? You know, is it me or is it the sort of the hardware we're, we're looking at? It, it's it's quite interesting when we actually try and use these vague green words to try and convince people that you know we are really good because you know we are an eco-friendly firm and that doesn't mean anything really at all you know sort of yeah. i could talk to some trees does that make me eco-friendly uh definitely not definitely not but it, it, it's wonderful claims like these but you've got to sort of let's say you know you make a close you say your products are 100 percent sustainable or hundred percent recyclable, you know, you, any measure you want to put on it, right? Is it because you're hundred percent sustainable or recyclable or whatever, but you source, you know, your, your third party source, yeah. all the stuff to someone else who isn't. And therefore you can claim, or you know, the, the company can claim they're hundred percent sustainable or recyclable because they've cut off the bit from them that makes them non-recyclable or non-sustainable. Yeah. So it's not them that's doing it. It's all about the sort of labeling. However, a product you see, which is made by them and labeled by this actual designer, right? Actually isn't sustainable because of course it came from that original third party that wasn't. So it cannot be claimed forwards. If that makes sense, you've got to claim the guarantee or the satisfaction, you know, the, 100% recyclable or 100% sustainable right through the chain as opposed yeah. to just being your bit I, I know that because when we bought my uh, my windows you know, we bought it with a 25 year guarantee the 25 year guarantee may be on the windows but it wasn't on the company uh, and so the company went bust so uh, th this guarantee is sort of well, worthless. And as my dad used to say, and I will point out my dad is dead, that uh, he used to go in and some people were offering a lifetime guarantee on something. And he said, do you mean my lifetime? Because that's probably only going to be a couple of weeks, uh, which uh, he thought was quite amusing. Yeah, they, they, they did try to argue. So, no, 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 no. Lifetime of the product. Lifetime of the product. Yes. Yeah. How about the red herrings, though? We get some uh, red herrings. I've seen uh, some sort of clever sort of uh, organic cigarettes. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's made from tobacco. It is organic, isn't it? I well, suppose. That, that's, yes. that's the and point, yeah. Grown organically, and yeah. The paper is, and yeah. they're in recycled boxes. Yeah. The paper, the boxes made from recycled paper, yeah. And uh, it sounds really good until you think, yeah, but cigarettes, they are bad for the environment and they are certainly bad for people. Yeah. The, the, the one I saw very recently was um, uh, a say makeup company. I can't remember what actual, they, they make stuff. Uh, anyway, they were selling some lovely palm oil based product, moisturizer, I think it was, in a nice bottle. And they said, this bottle is a cardboard bottle. Or, okay, now there's two ways they could have gone with this. One, they could use a cardboard bottle that had plastic coating on the inside. Therefore, technically, it is a cardboard bottle. Not very recyclable. Though. Not recyclable. However, they said, no, 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 no. Our product's 100% recyclable. You go, all oh, right, okay. We're not using that clever film inside to fall. That's why coffee cups can't be recycled. No, no. What they did was they took a plastic bottle, which is recyclable, and they wrapped it in a glorified cardboard shell. So it looked very good. Yeah. So it looked like a cardboard. And, and could you separate them easily to recycle yeah. oh, them? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you could. So technically, they're fine. Technically, yes, their product was 100% recyclable. Or, yeah. It was the fact that it was made from two pieces and it's still made from plastic, which is not a good thing to make you know, things from, basically, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, they, they, they attempted, I'll grant them that. It's just a problem of, you know, by doing this, they, they sort of went round and sort of, you know, uh, it just, just didn't quite work in relation to, you know, it's almost like a bait and switch. You know, they said, yes, it is re recyclable which it was, you know, guaranteed the stuff was, it was just sort of like, oh, we're going to cover 
a plastic bottle in paper to fool everybody. Mwaha! Yeah, and you mentioned bait and switch. That's the idea where they draw someone in with one product that is really is eco-friendly, uh, whatever that means, uh, and recyclable. But, uh, oh, that might be a bit expensive. But they also do a cheaper version. Uh, and people say, oh, yeah, I'll go for the cheaper version. But that one isn't recyclable. It isn't eco-friendly. They've sort of drawn you in and... Uh, fooled you and then sort of switch it to uh, another product and that's you changing that's not them doing it but it's still sort of really a form of greenwashing isn't it oh yes absolutely it, it's the you could pay for the expensive recycle version or if you you, you could pay for the cheap non recycle version because it's cheap therefore you know cheaper materials and so suddenly you're the consumer is now feeling guilty oh, that having a recyclable product costs more as opposed to why don't the company themselves stop selling, not why I wouldn't say stop selling the cheap one, but make a middle ground where the, they don't sell the cheap one and then reduce the price of the big one so that people then steered onto it. Yeah, it's essentially, it's a not good business practice, but good um, ethical business practice. Yeah. How about then, let's think more of some of these green buzzwords. Um, do you think I could, uh, you know, me being a teacher and my, my courses, I think CFC freeze perhaps a little bit, but, you know, I could be sort of very eco-friendly. I could have images of me teaching. We could have it in a field, you know, with the wind blowing through my hair. Wait, well. I mean, I could, we could give you a wig. Yeah, all right. Okay, wind blowing through my wig. And uh, we could sort of make it look sort of more friendly with images. And we could use all those sort of green buzzwords to make it sound a lot better. You know, my lessons are non-toxic. Non-toxic, CFC-free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're sustainable. They're sus well, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, while I'm alive, they'll be sustainable, yeah. I suppose. Yes. Yeah. So... How how do you go around getting around this? What do you do as a person to try and have a look at trying this? Um, what do you do to try and get around what people are well, hiding, I suppose? Yeah, it, it, it sort of is the, the sense of not misinformation, but it is information that's not necessarily... It is correct, but it's not necessarily true. It, it, it's the falseness of things. So you've got to start off the list you've got to start down going through the list and basically you've got to look at someone's claims like let's take ryanair's lowest emissions and you've got to ask that question of emissions of what you know are you saying as a company and or, do they actually state it somewhere do they actually st yeah exactly that that's the critical thing does it is it stated somewhere you know the effort they were looking for ryanair it did state it was co2 emissions of the company not the aircraft because they actually have that in small writing they down have somewhere. That small writing because they have to show it on the thing it's just occasionally things get cropped but most importantly on our efforts they have to state it because otherwise the regulators all complain saying you're showing misinformation but they put it on there and then they say no we're not it's right that you can read it so they have to grant it but it, it's one of those things so it, it's looking for those not dodgy practices but reading the small print if there are small print because that shows you what they're trying to hide because they have to show it but they're making it really hard for you to spot it well this week you found me a, an article uh, about um making power in from coal in in japan and what they're doing they found if they mix a little bit of ammonia with mm -hmm. the coal it's uh it, it makes, I wouldn't say it makes it more efficient. That's the wrong way, but yes. Yeah, it, it, it is. It makes more efficient, more powerful, whatever. Okay. Um, so we, we put some ammonia in there and that sounds quite good. So we're making our coal fired power station much more efficient, cleaner, uh, cleaner and whatever by mixing it with ammonia. Now, uh, what don't they tell you there? Well, unfortunately, making the ammonia is actually much more damaging to the environment 
than the burning of the coal. So they've taken something that's yeah, relatively bad, add in something that was majorly bad to make something that's good. It's like two negatives equals a positive. Mm, not but if you, sure. you actually do the, the um, not the chemistry on this, but the sort of economics on this, to make ammonia, we've got to get a source of hydrogen. Where are you going to get the hydrogen from? Oh, oh let, let's go outboard and say coal. Okay, coal or oil. Coal gas. Okay, so let's start with that and nitrogen that's easy i'm going to get that from the air now to make ammonia what you have to do you have to heat it up and what you're going to heat it up with oh electricity and things well, like that no, no, i'm going to do it with coal oh coal okay and then what i've got to do is put it under intense pressure also powered by coal okay and then i've got to i've got this ammonia gas now i've got to try and get it so i'm going to have to liquefy it so i'm going to have to cool it which is going to be powered by well powered by electricity which is powered by coal okay and now i've got my ammonia which cost an awful lot to make in energy and now i can put a little bit of that with my coal the new coal not the previous coals we've used yeah and and make it very slightly more efficient yeah i know it was, it was glorious um funny enough this practice was seen and was looked at by regulators of the power industry and they said well this is wrong you know but and they've been caught out basically caught with, out the, at, with this greenwashing mm, and but they've greenwashed saying they've actually made their coal more efficient more green because they're adding ammonia on it yeah and yeah. it's and what they said is absolutely true and scientifically it's valid, valid, valid and everything else. Yep. It's just, as I said, the, you know, the energy required to make this uh, ammonia is sort of off the charts compared with the energy savings that they've got. Yeah, it's, it's all about sort of, yes, you can make a little, your product or your thing eco-friendly, but if it's not followed down the chain by everybody else, then what was the point of you doing your bit? Yeah, this is the whole, yeah, loads of people complain about this in the oil industry. So, you know, they're the biggest polluters and yet they're the ones building the wind turbines and all those sorts of stuff and trying to prove they've got a green record. And people are saying, yeah, sure, they're building turbines to make themselves look green. But the fact that they keep on doing all this oil extraction, producing all this CO2, you know, that should be constantly reminded of and if the company, as soon as the company says, no, 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 we're, we're green now, it's a, but you weren't. You know, you yeah, yeah, but a that. lot of this they're coming up with now, they do it and they say, yes, we're green because we're doing carbon offsetting. Oh, yes. The, the, the common thing is, of course, the carbon offsetting, which is we're going to emit lots of CO2, but we're only going to use our money we've generated from all this stuff. A little bit of money. A little bit of money, yes, of course, yeah. To then plant or trees or do something that absorbs the carbon that we've emitted. Yeah, woo, look at us. And yeah. makes us look really good, it, isn't it? Yeah, makes it basically looks at out equals in, and therefore we're a neutral, carbon neutral, which is another one of those lovely terms that we mentioned earlier. So yeah, it is one of those things where yes, sure, you're you're spitting out and then you're sucking it in, except you're not sucking in as much as you're um excluding out which is fine and then you're saying yeah but we have to do that so so why don't you put more money into speed oh we can't do that because because you know the technology's not there or it's not quite right you know therefore they're saying they can't make the in bigger but they have to make the out as large as they can and, and they sort of could they not reduce the out to make it the size of the in and therefore they would be uh, but they can't do that because of the lovely thing called a profit well, you see, my company, I buy in electricity, like everyone does. I buy in gas and I buy in water and those sort of things. And I do my best to make sure that the stuff that I'm buying in is as green as possible, is carbon neutral as possible. Yeah. And so then if I look at what I'm actually doing, are we actually doing this in a green way? Today, it's a lovely sunny day. All the electricity we're using at the moment to make this podcast and video 
is actually powered by the sun. We're not taking any energy from the grid at all I to do this. I think we, we're taking a little bit. I think we're on the power, our lovely power meter. It, it's one bar. It's one of those, who knows how much electricity there is, but it's just one bar. So it's because it's welcome to winter. Yeah, no, we we actually got rid of the one bar before we came out. Oh, you checked. Yes, you checked. I did check oh, to enough. see, and probably by about uh, an hour's time, it would increase up to that one bar. Yeah, so and it'll, no, the one bar will have gone because the sun will now be going past the, below the yard arm, yeah. as they say. So, so, so interesting. We chose to do the podcast at this time to make sure that we've got all the the most amount of electricity during the peak. Of the sunshine outside. Yeah. However, if it had been a rainy day, we'd have still had to do the podcast, and we wouldn't have been as green. So that yeah, you know, but that's a claim. You see, we've just made a claim. But what we can say is, at the time of the recording, we won't tell you the time because I haven't can't see a clock, but I can. It's twelve o'clock. Yeah. And you know, but if we did it on a rainy day, you know, yeah, that claim technically is wrong but also technically right in regards to the fact that sort of, if it was sunny, we would have been making it. It wasn't. So you, you can see, you can, we can easily make these claims and say all these things and you sort of go, what was the, not the point of it, but what sort of, what was the, how, why did you make these claims or what were you trying to say? You know, and essentially yeah. we've just greenwashed this little program yeah this program. and could all of the bits and pieces that i do actually be sort of recyclable sort of green environmentally friendly zero carbon and the answer is i don't see that i can do everything zero carbon uh i don't actually have an electric car i'm not using it today so therefore i'm actually still not using any petrol either but can I honestly say, you know, today we were sort of 100% sort of green. And uh, if we actually even knew what 100% green meant. So it, it, it's hard yeah. to say. It, it's, it's one of those things where you've got to, people got to watch out for things. things. Yeah. And it's not people got to claim, they can claim all they like on these things. But it's the sort of, if they are going to be certified, who are they certified by? You know, what claims are making, and is there any small print? Does any is there anything that backs this claim up? Is there any sort of evidence that they back this claim up? Can you find and see that they're doing things differently? You know, it's like the the case of they're making. I think it was something like the post office buying lots of electric vans, and they're doing it for all the local deliveries. Therefore making the local deliveries green, but not the, um, I say larger ones, you know, when they have to travel from the further distance, further yes, distance. Yes. but by doing a little bit, suddenly they've gone from using so much petrol, they're being better. And then they're using the petrol where it's more efficient on the long haul than on the very tiny short haul. So, yeah. you know, you sort of, you look at that and instead of losing that carbon, you're actually gaining efficiency. Which is a oh, much, much yeah. better, I won't say argument, but a much better practice. My, uh, most of my shopping comes from a certain online shop, and I, I won't me mention Amazon by name, but no, I will. There, what I did notice is the vans that have been delivering to me now are electric. I know they've been really scary because you, you know, you, you, you don't you notice don't them notice creeping them. up on you. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But that's a different story. But how? Are they charging those little vehicles? And that's the difficult bit to know. Yeah. And and that's that's the greenwashing. They've they've just attempted to greenwash us. Their car electric vehicles yeah. are yeah. Or have they? And we don't know. This is this is the big problem. Yeah. You've been listening to the Going Green podcast. We hope to see you next week. Well, we won't see you. You'll you'll hear and see us. So until then, it's goodbye from me. And a goodbye from a not-so-green pool. Goodbye.